Today's video has been sponsored by Brightland. How's it going, my peeps, and welcome back to the channel. It's a new year, we've got a new set that you'll see very soon, and we've got new hair from a tweet three years ago. Now, by far, one of the most requested recipes always through the years is just straight up plain New York style pizza. And there's a couple reasons I haven't really done that yet. Namely, I know how hard it is to make really good New York style pizza at home. It's pretty close to impossible. And also, I don't ever feel the need to make it at home because all I have to do is take a quick trip down the West Side Highway and stop at one of the best places ever, Joe's. Everybody and their mother on Food YouTube has been to this place. That's also why it's jacked up the price, but it's still worth it in my opinion. I mean, look at this thing. It's a freaking beauty. And I came here for a very specific reason in which I will tell you in a second. Mm. Anybody can grab a low moisture mozzarella cheese or some really good tomatoes, but it's the crust that's the magic for me. They're running a 800 degree oven in there. You cannot get something that's this thin and crisp, cracker-like on the bottom in a home oven. You just can't. Listen, you, could, you can hear that crunch in Iowa. But maybe today I'll be proven very wrong because I've picked four of the videos that you guys have sent to me countless times over the years, some of the best food creators on this platform, and we're gonna see who, if anybody, can get close to this delicious piece of culinary heaven. The four pizza wizards that will be trying to convince me of the impossible today are Kenji Lopez Alt and Vito Lacopelli, Mark Iacono from Lucali's Pizza, and of course, Adam Ragusia. But before I can get started with anybody's recipe, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, Brightland. If you're like me and enjoy spending the colder months cooking hearty and healthy meals for the people you love, Brightland is about to be your new best friend. Brightland is a premium quality olive oil that is perfect for baking and cooking, drizzling and bringing a golden state to any moment. These guys know that the basic ingredients can make or break a dish. Your food is only gonna end up being as good as the products that you use. And today, Brightland graciously sent me their Alive, Awake, and Ardor Chili Olive Oils, each being created with a different food pairing in mind. Their products taste super fresh, all thanks to the heirloom olives grown out in California. They are loaded with antioxidant-rich compounds that offer a sharp and peppery, flavorful taste. I've been using these guys for bread and pastas, my pizzas all day as you will see, and finishing oils, I have not found a single thing that these have not worked perfectly for. If you know somebody that loves to cook, this has got to be one of the best birthday, Christmas, Valentine's Day, or whenever gifts. So do yourself a favor and start the new year off right by clicking the link in the top line of the description and getting 10% off of Brightland's high quality products. And thanks so much to Brightland for sponsoring today's video. Leading off today is an extremely strong contender, Kenji Lopez Alt and his classic New York style pizza. You will need some all-purpose flour and olive oil, some warm water and some dough enhancer, kosher salt and San Marzano tomatoes, instant yeast and whole milk, low moisture mozzarella, as well as a few fresh basil leaves. First and foremost, welcome back to the channel, everybody. It has been a minute. I would just like to thank everyone on Instagram and Twitter. If you were on there and keeping up with things the past few weeks, I love you all dearly. If you're not already over there, my Instagram is David underscore Seymour one. I elected to go with Kenji's recipe first for Numerous reasons, uh, but namely because it is the most classic, traditional, and simplest variation that we're gonna be trying today. The dough is as easy as they come. It's flour, water, yeast, oil, and salt, with a little pinch of the dough enhancer or dough conditioner. You can find that from King Arthur flour. That's supposed to make the gluten form a little bit faster in the dough, and then also make it easier to stretch out at the very end. And then the sauce is just straight up pureed San Marzano tomatoes, and the cheese is a whole milk, low moisture mozzarella shredded finely. The pizza is finished with a little sprinkling of the kosher salt, some more of the olive oil and some fresh basil leaves, and then baked at the highest temperature your indoor oven goes. For me, that's gonna be 550 Fahrenheit that I have been preheating for an hour with my brand new pizza stone inside of it. If you watched the Joshua Calzone video, you would know the fate of my last pizza stone. So I acquired this one for this recipe, and you're gonna see all different kinds of cooking methods and instruments throughout this video. So things should get pretty interesting. This goes in the oven for, I don't really know how many minutes, to be honest, it depends on your oven. For me, it was about five or six. You're just looking for some blistered chari bits along the cheese, some nice even browning along the crust. This was as far as I felt comfortable taking this one, and it looks pretty dang good. I already have some snap judgments, but I will save them all for after the tasting, so let's give this guy a try. Oh, 
Wow. This has got to be up there, top three, I'd say, with my favorite kitchen smells. It's up there with like brown butter, uh, bray short ribs, a couple other things. There's just not a whole lot like it. This is extremely good. This is as classic as you can possibly get. Uh, I love the nice even color around the crust. The little bit of salt and basil on top of there is kind of the perfect flavoring. I don't know that I need the extra little drizzle of olive oil on top. The cheese kind of produces enough grease as it is. Uh, and for the bottom, there's the littlest bits of like charriness, but nowhere near what you would get at a pizzeria. I could have left it in a little bit longer, uh, but I would have ran the risk of the top getting a little bit too dark. And whereas this is dry and like kind of hard, crunchy, like a matzah almost, uh, it doesn't have that light, airy, like crispiness that I'm looking for in a really good pizzeria pie. Again, not bad, extremely good for a homemade pizza, but I'm not convinced yet. Next up to the plate, we've got Vito Lacopelli with his next level New York style pizza. I grabbed some San Marzano tomatoes and honey, double zero flour and semolina rimacinata, pre-shredded low moisture mozzarella and warm water, active dry yeast and dried oregano, some sugar, salt, and olive oil. Immediately, I wanted to get started with this dough because this one is gonna be proofed overnight as are the next two that we're gonna be making. Kenji's was actually the only dough that isn't gonna get an overnight proof and his was the only one that is made in any kind of machinery. I was fully expecting to have to break out the stand mixer for this video, but for the next few, they are all going to be made by hand. Which means I also could have titled this video, How to Shred Your Forearms While in the Kitchen. Now this dough is going to rise three separate times. The first time, once you've got everything mixed together for a bulk fermentation, meaning you don't split it down to the individual dough balls yet. Then a second time, once you do break it all up at room temperature for about three to four hours, and then you're gonna stick them in the fridge overnight to allow them to finish their rise and fermentation completely. Now don't get me wrong before I say this, this pizza in the video ends up looking great. The ingredients are all on point, the two different kinds of flours, the olive oil and the San Marzano's, but I can't help feel like I'm experiencing what Italians feel when they watch Americans try to make Italian food, if that makes any sense anyway, and for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I've never been to a pizzeria or experienced pizza other than like a Domino's that is made on a screen. I know that's probably just an alternative if you don't have a pizza stone or steel, but I just don't have too much experience with screens and I'll never have one with a big screen. That was kind of lame, I'm sorry. And also, this thing is freaking loaded with dried oregano. I nearly gasped when I first watched this video. He almost dumps like a third of a bottle on there. It's gonna taste like an oregano lick. But in the spirit of doing things exactly how all these recipes and videos do them, I will do the same. Again, this is gonna get baked at the highest temperature your oven goes. Just keep an eye on the crust and the cheese. And after about five and a half minutes for me, this looked pretty much done, at least on the top. I'm gonna drop all preconceived judgments that I've just been rambling about in order to taste this fairly. So let's give it a shot. By the way, before some of you run to the comments and say I p-worded out again and did this myself, this was professionally done. I didn't hate it right at first, but now that it's faded a little bit, I dislike it a lot. Uh, $100 later, expectation, reality. No. I don't love big uncooked chunks of tomato where you can feel the seeds and the skin in there. It doesn't get cooked enough in the oven for me anyway. Uh, the oregano is very overpowering. That's kind of all you taste. And then to cap it all off, there's not an ounce of color or crisp anywhere on the bottom of this. Uh, I think we all kind of kind of guessed that's what the screen was gonna result with. Uh, kind of looks like a pizza whenever Sam the cooking guy tries to make one. <laughs> I'm sorry Sam, I love you. The cheese is good. <laughs> I don't think uh, the fact that it was pre-shredded had any bearing on this one versus the last one. But yeah, overall, not one of my favorites. To kick off the second half of today's marathon video, we've got Mark Iacono's recipe, owner of Lucali's Pizza here in New York. I gathered together some all-purpose flour and water, 
sugar, salt and pepper, fresh parm and palio, low moisture mozzarella, some Del Monte tomatoes and buffalo, fresh mozzarella, extra virgin olive oil, dried oregano, active dry yeast, a fresh onion and garlic and lots of basil. So this YouTube video that I keep showing you was made and uploaded by one of the editors over at Food Insider, and somehow they coerced this recipe out of Mark. Is this the actual accurate one that he uses in the restaurant? I'm doubtful. Is it similar enough for our purposes today? Probably, but I still honestly don't know. We shall see if he faked them out with a fake recipe that might not even translate to home. I started with the dough again, which I had to quarter the recipe because the one that Mark sent the Food Inside team used three and a half pounds of flour. If you want to use this recipe for just two dough balls, you need 8.4 ounces of water, 14 ounces of flour, a half tablespoon of both oil, salt, and then somewhere between a quarter packet and a third of a packet of yeast. I tried to go right in the middle of those two measurements, so we'll see if this works or rises at all. I threw that into the fridge to rest overnight as well, and then whipped up my sauce, which is by far the most intense and extensive tomato sauce we've made yet. I was actually very surprised by this. I wouldn't guess that a commercial professional pizzeria cooks sauce, especially with as much stuff or for as long as Mark says he does. He says that he lets his cook for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. But I did the same thing. It got reduced beautifully and then I gave it a blitz in my blender so I don't have any big chunks of onion or stuff like that. And since we're only finishing this with our toppings after it comes out of the oven and kind of shredding the cheese right on top of the pizza, it's already time to start rolling out the dough. Don't forget the classic wine bottle rolling pin technique that Mark is always seen using in videos on YouTube. And I'm very intrigued by this buffalo mozzarella. It's sitting in a brine, so it's not super fresh. And I assume it's going to be insanely moist. This is usually a no-go on New York style pizzas because if you put too much, it'll start pooling up in there. But I went lightly, or at least as much as I thought I could get on there. And then it's gonna cook with the same procedure as Kenji's. Excuse my near failure at dismounting this onto the stone. It decided to stick at the last second. But I would say crisis avoided because this thing looks freaking beautiful. I am once again drooling getting the last few shots of this thing. I kind of miss this feeling. So let's shut up and just grab a slice and try this thing out. Mm -hmm. This is unbelievable. Definitely my favorite so far. I don't think that's much of a secret. It is perfect all around. The back has probably the best color yet, still from the stone. I love the fresh basil and Parmesan on there. I love the mix of the fresh buffalo mozzarella and the low moisture stuff. It's a really good balance of cheeses with the liquid and tanginess. It's probably closer to a margarita pizza than a traditional New York style, which is fine, they're so similar anyway. The sauce is so flavorful, I think that's my favorite part. And the crust maintained that super dry, crisp bottom, and that little bit of like moist, tacky, almost underdoneness on top. That's the perfect marriage in my opinion. One of the best homemade pizzas I've ever made, it's my favorite so far today, but is it better or as good as the pizzeria style stuff? I don't think so, but we are getting closer. Lastly today, but certainly not least, is Mr. Adam Ragusia himself. Pretty much king of New York style pizza recipes here on YouTube. It's how his channel popped off to begin with. That original video garnering over 20 million views, and then the new version two getting nine million views, respectively. So there is most definitely a whole lot at stake here. For his recipe, you will need some bread flour and warm water, crushed tomatoes and kosher salt, fresh parmesan and olive oil, dried oregano, some sugar, some cornmeal and whole milk, low moisture mozzarella, and of course some active dry yeast. There are so many other things that I could say about this recipe in this video. It's up there with one of the most requested recipes of all time and I have been sitting on it until a video like this came along. Again, I started with the dough because this needs to rise at least for a day in the fridge, if not multiple days. And I know he said it was supposed to be a wet dough and very light, but this was essentially a flubber slime. He acknowledges you're gonna have to add a little bit more to be able to work with it, but I had to add what felt like 
almost double the amount of flour he called for. I eventually got there though. It definitely helps if you have a lot of past experience with pizza doughs and how they should feel. And just like Adam did, I kneaded it by hand. I separated them and weighed them by hand and then just plopped them in their own containers with plenty of olive oil so they won't stick and in the fridge for anywhere between one and seven days when you're ready to use them. Over to the sauce. I have been waiting for this moment because this is a classic example of a food that seems so simple and easy to make on the surface, but it's just so much more complex and there can be so many more variables. The biggest one that I noticed anywhere in these recipes is when Adam says this, the key thing is to not cook this sauce before it goes on the pizza. Canned foods are already cooked a little. Canning requires heat. If you cook your sauce any more than that, you're likely to lose the brightness that is key to this style. You end up with a flavor that reminds me more of lasagna than of pizza. Even though Mark Iacono, the owner of one of the most highest regarded pizza shops in New York, said this. Belmonte tomato sauce, yes. You're going to need about... 45 minutes, you know, cook time. This will be interesting to compare them. That's why I'm glad that they went one right after the other. But I think there's a world where both can work. And I really like that last one, so we'll see about this one. We're introducing some cornmeal to the bottom of this crust. That'll help it move on and off of the peel, add a little extra texture on the bottom. And then finally, one of the other biggest differences of this, I had to go out and buy a pizza steel. This is exactly what it sounds like. A big slab of very heavy and solid steel. It's basically one step up from a pizza stone. It should conduct heat better and give us the best chance possible at getting that pizzeria-like crust. I whipped my dough out and assembled this guy even bigger this time since my steel is a lot wider than anything else I've used today. And all this gets is some sauce, parmesan, and shredded mozzarella. No oil, no basil, no extra oregano, no nothing. Baked at 475 degrees for a couple minutes. I don't want to jump the gun and say anything prematurely and shoot myself in the foot, so I will not. But this looks okay, so I cut a slice, and let's give the final recipe on the day a shot. I will be damned. Everybody likes to title their YouTube videos the best blank I've ever made or the best blank you will ever taste, the best pizza you will ever make at home. He nailed it. He is not kidding. I'm kind of lost for words. I did not expect this. Never in my life did I think something like this would come out of my electric oven. With this kind of leoparding on the back, that looks like a pizzeria. Everything else, the cheese parm and sauce is also on point. I'm just I, I cannot believe this crust. Some homemade pizzas are crunchy, but they're like very dense and firm and they're like cracker-like. This is crispy. Look at the little air pockets in the crust. If you told me you just picked this up from one of my local pizzerias, I would believe you. Wow, man. Shout out to that $70 pizza steel too. It does the job of a $700 outdoor specialty oven. Absolutely no questions asked, Adam. You are the winner. Good job, congrats. Uh, you deserve all the hype and the views that your pizza videos get. Look at this shit. It's like a thinner, bubbly, crispy, focaccia, light, leopardy. <sighs> I can't. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. Thank you all for coming back to the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you to Brightland for making today's video possible. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I will see you right back here next time. Peace. They could have seen the fire out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we cooking up that rah rah, yeah, yeah. Now we eating all the fries out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we living super size, ah, uh, yeah. God, this is like a just a sound echo chamber. It's part of the charm. Yeah. The noise pollution is part of the charm.